So we'll uh, we'll get into this. Thanks very much for doing this. No, you're more than welcome. Uh, how's it out there? You know, we get a lot of information here in the UK because Italy, obviously, with the coronavirus, was ahead of us, and uh, it's been a terrible time. Just tell us a little bit about the situation out there. Um, yeah, it's 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 not nice. Um, I've I've tried to isolate myself as much as possible from from all the news as well. Um, you can really get caught up in looking at the number of cases and numbers of death each day, which which really just don't help um, w- with the sanity, really. Um, so it's, it's horrible here seeing the military trucks pull up to take away the, the dead people and, and and just seeing it explode still. I mean, we've been in quarantine two weeks and the numbers haven't slowed. So it's it's a scary time for everyone in the world and, and very much so here in Italy, us being out in front. Just give us an idea of the, the sort of spirit of the Italian people because, as you said, the numbers are devastating. But everybody that we see on social media are out on their verandas, some are playing music, uh, sort of motivating one another. You know, it, it, there's a real spirit there, isn't there? Yeah, no, it's incredible. When I when I first saw those popping up on social media, just smile from ear to ear because it's, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, I can't really picture any other places in the world kind of people on the balcony singing opera or or playing DJ sets, well, that one kind of made me laugh a bit. But um, yeah, the spirit of the people is amazing. Even, I mean, certainly a lot of tension going to the supermarket, you can notice it. Um, some people kind of are on edge, but but they're still under the mask. You can see that people are smiling um, and and it, and it, it's, it, people are approaching it with a pretty positive attitude. Well, we're, we're barely under a week into lockdown here. You're two weeks or so, maybe more. Um, <laughs> Any tips for us um, over in the UK uh, when you run out of box sets? Uh, I've, I've absolutely thrashed the PlayStation to death. So yeah, I, believe, I, I, I recommend doing everything in moderation if you if you want to drag it out. I mean, at the start, it was quite novel, um, thinking it was a bit of a holiday. So I was getting up and, you know, excited, playing PlayStation and relaxing, watching Netflix, things like that. But now it's like, God... Uh, I want to learn. I want to read books. I want to do something else. I need to start challenging my mind. Um, so, so there's all there's all the, always the good side of it, um, the relaxing side if you're into watching telly and that. Um, but I'd say don't don't absolutely gorge yourself on that in the first few days. Otherwise, you'll get sick of it. And what about you know? It affects all of us, of course, but uh, especially professional sportsmen like yourself. Your mid-season, you'd be the peak of your fitness. I would imagine Six Nations and. Guinness Pro 14, you know, there's only so much you can do in the house, but how are you staying fit and how are you staying connected with your coaches and teammates? Um, the coaching staff have been great, actually. They've, uh, over the last few days, all all the coaching staff have reached out with Skype calls to us all just to check in, see how we are. Um, just before they did that, all the trainers were checking in, um, asking what we need, what we can do, or what they can do to help. Um, the Benetton opened up the gym to us, so um, we could all go in go in not not to train but um we all all went in and and were able to take uh, some dumbbells some plates some medicine balls whatever we could use at home so um they've been amazing in providing as much as they can i mean we even it's seemed ridiculous at the time that we got sent a program of kind of hanging off tables and lifting chairs and <laughs> and things like that and i was just like what is this but but it was it was it's everything you'd, you'd need to i mean until you actually do it, you realise you can do a lot of work at home. Um, you've just got to be motivated to do it, which is, is challenging to stay motivated. Um, yeah, certainly not as fit as I was three weeks ago, and and I was actually in quite a good place with under. I mean, we're with uh, Six Nations and Franco Smith's. Uh, he loves to run, so we were getting fit. Um, so to see that kind of slide by the wayside a little bit is, is quite frustrating. Man, just talk about yourself a little bit. Uh, you go back, you know, to playing for the Blues, you know, under Pat Lamb, a uh, star-studded squad. You, you've come through now uh, in Italy, uh, 29 caps since 2017. But I've got to say, man, as somebody who watches all the Guinness Pro 14 games of Six Nations, you've li- really started to flourish in the last season or two, playing some of your best rugby. What do you attribute that to? Could it be Kieran Crowley's arrival, possibly? Yeah, I think Kieran played an absolute well, played the majority part in it all. Um, he he just breathed, breathed fresh air into to the Benetton setup and um, and kind of 
made me realise what rugby was like back in the past. You know, there w- it was actually a fun game to play, and I enjoyed going to training every day and enjoyed going out on uh, and playing the game. So yeah, Kieran brought in a lot of New Zealand style rugby, playing, p- chucking the ball around, doing fitness with the ball. I mean, fitness games weren't really known before Kieran arrived. We kind of did them every now and again, but but they became our main way of training here and, and just made everything more enjoyable. He obviously put a lot of trust in me with leadership and, and giving me the captaincy and that helped me grow into a, a better person and a better rugby player as well. Yeah, fair play. He's a, he's a great man. He's a great coach. And we've seen in the Guinness Pro 14, both here, Bert and Benetton, really push forward this this last year or two especially. And um, this couldn't have come at a worse time because Benetton, you know, really, when I was coaching the Ospreys, it used to be, and I'm not being, you know, disparaging here, it was a given game home or away. And mm. now you're fearful, A, of going there for a start, but also when Benetton come to your home place, as you showed most recently at the Dragons, you now stand to be confident winning away from home. I mean, what, what's, is that, that can't just be coaching, that must be a real development in the confidence of the players as well. Yeah, it's been a mess, Kieran, along with the staff, not only Kieran, they've, they've brought a lot of uh, mindset changes into us, How we and that started with our culture, how we're treating each other and, and how we value the game. Um, and yeah, just building that confidence slowly reassured us that, you know, we're not we're not any worse than anyone else. You know, it was it's the old rugby cliche of two arms and two legs and, and bleeding red. We're all the same, and, and a lot of Italian players uh, um, struggle with that uh, initially because they because they view the English teams, they view the Welsh, uh, Irish, they all treat, put them on a pedestal and think they're absolute yeah. gods. Um, so I think that realization that they're they're just human like us and and they have bad days and good days like everyone else um helped us understand that we can go away and perform and win games well for us you know in the in the commentary teams the punditry it's great to see um i love commentating on on benetton in particular because they bring a particular brand always something up the sleeve as well i'll get into the playoffs last year was a big thing this is a big dent now to all of us and who knows what will happen with the season but is it is there appetite for more of the same Do these Italian guys in your squad now believe that they can go on and possibly win the Guinness Pro 14 in the future? We do. I mean, uh, we absolutely set goals for us uh, to be in the finals this year. And I mean, you, you don't want to do any worse than you've done last year. To be in the quarters, that means that being in the semi or final. So um, that, that, that's certainly a, a goal that we have as a team. The year didn't start so well for us with, with just tripping up so many games in the 79th minute, 80th minute. Mm-hmm. Um, which was frustrating, but yeah, to, to to go away and win against Dragons and to kind of slowly put a bit of momentum back in place. Um, yeah, this whole thing, this whole coronavirus situation has come at a bad time for us as a club. I mean, yeah, a very small picture. I'll never, yeah, I mean, the, what the world's going through is much bigger than the game of rugby at the moment, but, but an unfortunate timing for us as a club. Mate, let's talk uh, a little bit positively and uh, let's, let's hop back to some great memories of, of the World Cup in Japan. Must have been a great experience. I was out there working for you as a player, you know, to be captain uh, in, in the World Cup for Italy in Japan. And, you know, as a player, as a fan, as a work, working commentator, what a World Cup it was. But i got to tell our viewers, our listeners, that... You were actually voted, I think I've got to check my notes here, you were the ninth best looking player in the World Cup. You made the top ten, mate. Yeah, it just shows that shows that the quality of rugby took a step up, but the quality of good looking guys out there took a massive dive because for me to make the top ten made my mum and my girlfriend proud, but I, I don't know how that's happened. <laughs> and a teammate of yours actually was, the, was voted the best looking, was it? and that was Jamie Hayward. Yeah, I'm, I'm pleased he popped me because it just took all the heat off me and he got all the grief for being number one. So I just kind of flew under the radar a little bit on that one. <laughs> Mate, tell us about it, Italy, because um, obviously, you know, things seem to be progressing in the Conor O'Shea. Difficult time for you guys in the Italian squad with the change of management and bad timing. You know, at the start of the Six Nations, you have to go to Cardiff, Wales away at the start. Tell us what's been going on in that and uh, the reasons behind it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a real shame that Connor's kind of left us. I mean, we would have loved him to stay on. And I think 
Um, yeah, the, the, with Franco coming in and, and Connor potentially staying, that would have been a, a real benefit. Um, two very different mindset and approaches to the game, but I think with the, with their brains working together, we could really put some good things in place for going forward. Um, but but Franco's been a huge asset. I've worked with him when I first came to Benetton, um, and so he's he's certainly fine tuned how he coaches over the years with the cheetahs. That and to see him come back to Italy and and what he's. Yeah, not, not necessarily see it all on the field straight away, but what he's installed in, into the boys and um, and his values and like just non-negotiables, I think has been absolutely amazing and his his philosophy to training and things like that, um, a massive asset to Tilly Rugby and and hopefully he, he stays on. I mean, yeah, it was it was kind of in a caretaker role, so we don't really know what's happening. Um, but but yeah, he's a massive asset. Well, you know. A lot of the, the the fans of the other nations always ask, you know, when are we going to see Italy really progress? And the difficulty for Italian rugby is, is all the other teams work hard and progress as well every year, don't they? So, what can we expect to see from Italy in the next few years, Dean? Yeah, I feel like a, I'm on repeat a little bit because I've always preached that we're gonna we're gonna finally get some wins and gonna be the, a team to look out for. And and that happened with Benetton. I always believed it, and it happened. Um, I believe 100% that Italy is going to come through in, in years to come. But, but like you say, it's we have to work 100% harder than everyone else because they're, they're all working as hard to be better and to innovate and to do new things. So um, with such limited time that we had under Franco to prep for the Six Nations is an, a, a true reflection of, I think, the steps we took as a team within that kind of three or four week period. Um, and, I, yeah, I see Italy winning games. I mean... Uh, I mean, Scotland was a shame not to. We played all the rugby and just didn't score any points. That was a that was a real bummer for us. And to be massively competitive against France, um, yeah, I mean, we're we're a bounce of the ball away from from changing momentum in a game and, and creating some real upsets. I think. Okay, Dean. Well, look, we'll we'll come towards the end of this by asking you some um, some quite personal questions or interesting questions for our Guinness Pro 14 viewers. Um, tell us who you think are the best team in the Guinness Pro 14 at the moment. Oh, I can't not say Leinster, can I? <laughs> uh, they're incredible at the moment. I mean, whether they're shipping out their first team, second team or their academy, they're, they're, they're winning every game. So, um, yeah, I can't argue with the stats on that and, and to go against them is always a, a mountain to climb. OK, which trip do you and the Benetton boys look forward to the most in the Guinness Pro 14 season? And for what reason? Oh, um, uh, <laughs> that's a tough one, actually. Uh, I'm factoring in travel and, and travel, whatever's the easiest travel for us. Mate. I've just said Leinster's good, but, but usually we can get a direct flight to Dublin and Dublin's always a, is a beautiful city as well. Um, so we actually have a good time every time we go to Leinster. We always give them a good challenge. Um, so I'd say that's probably one of the, one of it. For direct flights, amazing city, and, and a chance to to upset a, a giant. Well, with Dublin has be happy so far. Okay, one up and coming young Italian player that Guinness Pro 14 supporter should look out for. Um, I'll stick in my role, uh, Nicolo Canoni. Um, he, he's He's been with us the last two seasons in a, in a permit player kind of role, so just on loan. And, and um, he's, he's now signed for Benetton and, and is a massive part of the Italian side already. As a, oh God, don't even know how old he is, 21 or 2-year-old. He, he's young. <laughs> but he's, yeah, he's a class player, very physical, um, just not, not afraid to get into the dirty stuff. And, and I think he's got a big future in front of him. What's a typical pre-match meal for the Benetton team? Oh, it depends if the trainer's around. <laughs> <laughs> if the trainer's around, it's um, yeah, it's eggs and oats and bread. That's about it. But if he's not around and the buffet's open, the boys are digging straight into the sausages and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, look, what, um, just what, finally, Dean, what's, what's going to be your routine now for, I'd imagine, the next couple of weeks because everything's up in the air. Um, it's going to be different for Kieran, difficult for him to get you together, but just stay in touch. What's the sort of routine as regards being a professional rugby player? What, what can you do? Um, just working. My girlfriend's actually kind of become my personal trainer. She's 
probably more motivated than I am in this time. So it's been been good for me. Um, so yeah, she drags me out onto the onto the little garden next to our house, and we have a a little run around or a, or throw some weights around, whatever we can do down there. Um, so that's kind of how we start the day, and then from there, it's just about keeping occupied. Of um, applied to study a few things back in New Zealand, um, just so I can keep the brain active. Um, and that I think that'll take up the majority of my time. Dan, you're a good man. Look, stay safe, uh, stay fit. We really look forward to seeing you back in the Guinness Pro 14 uh, whenever it starts again. And uh, I look forward yeah. to commentating on you and, and seeing you at one of those games. But in the meantime, you take care of yourself, stay safe, you and your family. Will do. Thank you very much, Sean, and thank you for your time.